quite a job there, but... reporter and we are here at the bottom of Chelsea on the west side of Manhattan we're gonna run into the Whitney Museum and we're gonna try to bring you some pictures of the Whitney Biennial 2017 stay tuned Thank you. You were going up. Okay. Going up, going up. Well, I uh, just spoke with the the greeters, the ladies at the reception desk that are handing out the press packets and stuff, and uh, well, they told me that this biennial is just on two floors, so that makes it a little easier. It's on the sixth and fifth floor so we're going to start here on number six and uh, I'm not sure they've probably got 60 or 70 artists in this show something like that the 2017 Whitney Biennial is the 78th installment of the longest running survey of American art featuring 63 individuals and collectives whose works take a wide variety of forms from painting and installation to activism and video game design. Okay, so this started in 1932 and <laughs> I should splice a scene of the original Gertrude Vanderbilt Studios, which are now the uh, New York Studio School things in here. And this show was curated by Christopher Y. Liu, an independent curator, and Mia Lox. And this is the first biennial uh, at the Whitney's new building here down in the Meatpacking District. This piece is by Henry Taylor and it's titled Ancestors of Genghis Khan with Black Men on Horses 2015 to 2017 Acrylic on Canvas and uh, yeah this is a big painting I would say this is probably about uh, geez, I don't know 10 by 20 22 feet well I have heard a little bit of gossip about this particular iteration and uh, one of the things I've heard was that uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more painting in this ah. edition of the biennial than we've seen recently. I think the last one they only had five or six out of 90 artists were painters. Well, these are this is a suite of paintings by Joe Bear and uh, Actually, one of the great things about the Whitney is that uh, the biennial is that occasionally they not only feature young up-and-coming artists, but every now and then they also uh, revive the careers or at least give some recognition to some older artists. And uh, well, Joe Bear was one of the very influential minimalist painters, reductivist painters. Right. 
and uh, I think she's been living in England for the last 25 or 30 years. Let's see. Is your oil on canvas, unstretched? Got a little uh, snippet of a Picasso, Las Minas. Oh, there's Walter. This is titled Heraldry. Posts and spread 2013 oil on canvas. I see that's probably about uh, maybe a five foot square. This must be Joe. So I've got a series of, looks like mostly landscape photographs here by Anne Mai Lee. It's titled Monument General PGT Bowergard, New Orleans. Okay. And I'm not going to give you all the names here, we'll just sort of run down and look at some of Anne Mai's photographs here. Well, one of the uh, interesting things about the biennial that uh, I was always reminded of when I was a young student is that uh, <laughs> If you want to see how fleeting uh, stardom in the art world is, just go pick up a copy of the Whitney Biennials catalog from 10 or 12 or 15 or 20 years ago. This is by Sky Hapinka, titled Visions of an Island 2016. Anyway, if you pick up one of these catalogs that are 10 or 15 or 20 years old, you will see how fast all these people's names and reputations have disappeared. Well, the other thing I was would like to mention is that uh, the Whitney is all, always known as the the Biennial is always known as the show you love to hate, and because they bill it as. Uh, Maybe the most prestigious survey of American art. Uh, they get a lot of flack. This is also by Henry Taylor. The time they ain't changing fast enough 2017. This is acrylic on canvas. And I would say that's probably about uh, six by eight feet, six by seven and a half feet, something like that. Well, I, uh, I gave up being uh, upset by what I see at the, at the shows here. This is by Donna Lawson titled Ring Bearer. Inkjet print. Oh, so they're literally... This is a tall painting. That's got to be about 12 feet tall more. Henry Taylor, the fourth, 2012 to 2017. Now, I kind of got an echo of some early David Hockney with this, although it's really uh, pretty massive as far as the scale goes. And uh, I like Henry's factor. Uh, again, you know, I look at a lot of painting and, and uh, it's hard for people, at least from what I've seen, for people to get a nice uh, kind of urgent, authentic feel to the brushwork with acrylic, but uh, Henry's doing a good job of that. 
more Donna Lawson signs. Midi City, one of these are gang members. Oh, he's pixelated somebody there. More Henry Taylor. Got a little bit of uh, text in there. Donna Lawson. Nicole. That's Nicole. Well, actually, I like the way that uh, the figure is laying on this kind of geometrically abstract carpet. It's nice. I like the palette, too. More Gina. It looks like Gina's been <laughs> getting my furniture. Okay, some kind of interactive thing. I usually try to avoid these. Oh, virtual reality. Yikes. I'm having enough trouble with real reality. Also, this show is huge and I'm not going to be able to uh, focus in on everything. This looks like an installation by Kari Upson, born in 1972 in San Bernardino, California. In search of the perfect double. Okay, they say these are urethane pigment and aluminum. So I'm wondering if these are casts. Hard to say. Oh, there's Adam Weinberg, the director. Hi. Uh, <laughs> he actually greets me nowadays, and uh, I was talking to Walter and saying, I think I've been covering this, the Whitney Biennial now for about 10 years, and you can go back and look at the first version, I think 2007, when I was thrown out of the galleries. Well, this room is by Assad Raza. Since he lives in New York and Brussels, Belgium. Root sequence, mother tongue, 2017. 26 trees, UV lighting, customized scents, carpet, and cabinet. Well, this is nice. Got some blossom. To what? A red butt? Do you know? This red butt? I don't know, not personally. <laughs> the interesting thing is that it's, at this moment and in the show, it's the only tree that's edible. So you can eat the bud. Can I eat the bud? Can I? No, you shouldn't. I, I shouldn't eat? there's nothing left but general. Okay. So it's just potentially one could eat it. It's not that you're inviting people to eat the buds. Exactly. Okay, and this is the only this is the only red bud in this particular show. What about some of these other? F okay, I see the. How about these two flowering ones over here? These are two cherry trees. Cherry trees. And the interesting thing is that they don't reproduce, so they are just red to look pretty. Now, are these uh, budding early this year? I mean, do they normally bud they at this bud time of the year? They a little bit earlier because, okay. of, because they are now near the very warm temperature inside. But these are Japanese trees, so... Okay, thank this you. Is, this is a little uh, bag full of soil that uh, one of the caretakers brought from Oregon. It has earth from the reservation she grew up in. Okay, yeah. thank you. 
Well, it was 22 degrees when I came across the Brooklyn Bridge this morning. Uh, <laughs> and because we're here in the sun, it's not too bad. This is by GCC. Nanu Al Hamad, Abdul Al Matari, Aziz Al Quittini, Barak Al Zaid, Kaid Al Karabali, Amal Kalafa, Fatima Al Qadari, and Minoria Al Qadari. Local police find fruit with spells 2017. Metal, styrofoam, fiberglass, wood, latex, paint, concrete, pavers, faux rocks, and other materials. I like the way they've built this uh, framework to hold this sort of like a huge uh, billboard. It's by Park MacArthur. Strangely, this actually looks like Joe Barr's paintings, but they're saying that uh, these are made with using federal specifications for signage. Like laminated metal with rivets. This is a uh, gallery of works by Celeste Dupe Spencer. Well, I like the uh, the fact that they're they've probably got fewer artists in this biennial than a lot of previous ones, but they're uh, presenting more work, so you get a little little broader view of each one of these artists. Oeuvre. This is titled Fall With Me For A Million Days My Sweet Waterfall 2016 Oil on Canvas And I guess I would kind of consider this eccentric figuration and uh, there's a kind of an Americana side to this. Makes me think that uh, Celeste has seen a little Nicole Eisenman. is that uh, the signage and the wall labels on a show like this always are confusing. I guess this is titled Pink Floyd Uwa. Maybe not. St. Tammany Parish. So, uh, these are probably all the Trump voters. It looks like uh, watercolor and ink. Nice. 
Clay gets five years and ten thousand dollar fine. Oh, so we got more Picasso quotations. It's titled Veterans Day, Oil on Linen. Yeah, Celeste is a very accomplished draftsman. Uh, this is graphite on paper, but uh, it gets some nice rich blacks. Okay, I don't have time to read all this. Well, there he does make an outright allusion to Trump. It's a video by Tola Madani, Sex Ed by God 2017. And, uh, well, that's interesting because this is some very painterly aspects to it. So there's some paintings by Tala Madani. Shitty Disco 2017, Black Sun and Babeless. Okay. So we got some spray paint in there. Oil on linen. I like the uh, fades of the light. We got some silk screen in there. Something with the uh, grids of dots. Little shafts. I'd say all of these paintings are about uh, maybe five by four feet. This installation is by Kea, Kristen Brasht, and Debel Ellers, founded in 2010. And this is mixed media resins. Uh, I think this is what a lot of young artists are doing nowadays, kind of uh, combining sculpture, installation, painting, collage, assemblage. And uh, all these look like they've got uh, pieces of driftwood, aluminum tubing, pipes, wire. Um, I don't know whether this is actually, say, cotton fabric or whether that's plastic. I guess it looks like cotton, maybe. Well, 
it's big. Oh, and they've also got uh, handles. So those are for uh, handicapped people <laughs> to hold on when you go to the bathroom. And So I've got little uh, plastic chambers in there of, I don't know what that is. It's like dried flowers. Cast resin belts. Oh, I like this part. I've got the little, looks like cast resin bludgeons. Oh, they're on a chain. Okay, so these are all kind of wired together like a talisman or something. This is big, and you've got uh, electric lights behind there. It's kind of uh, creepy. This does kind of have the sense of some kind of uh, bizarre science fiction life form <laughs> out somewhere in the galaxy making very personal art. Well, I like the tile part of this. If you could uh, hang your spacesuits in here. This is a very large and prolific installation. Got uh, some sculptures by Josie Reeves. Well, this caught my eye. Nice place to be installed right here in front of the Hudson. Uh, so we've got plywood and driftwood, woven bags. It's kind of nice, like one of the corner tchotchke shells. And some kind of filler, sawdust and glue. this piece. And you've got a couch to go with it. Normally you just buy the piece to hang over the couch, but in this case you get a, the piece and the couch. You've even got a uh, magenta organdy slip cover <laughs> Josie likes his furniture let's go down to the fifth floor 